Okay, this is going to be on uh, propagation and optical fibers and the modal eigenvalue equation. And we know that a fiber optic cable or fi uh, fiber is a cylindrical waveguide. Okay, and we've got three components. Uh, we have a, a radial component, the radius of the uh, core or clad if we go all the way out. Uh, Z is the direction along propagation, and phi is the azimuthal component, the angle that goes around. And what we're going to do is express the uh, wave equation. We're going to Fourier transform the wave equation for an electric field to the Helmholtz equation here, and where the N is the square of the refractive index of light inside the fiber, and uh, K squared uh, naught is the uh, square of the wave number. All right, so what we'll do is expand the Laplace the operator there uh, in cylindrical coordinates. That way we've got our electric field uh, written out explicitly, each component. And uh, then we got uh, the, you know, the addition of the term equals zero. Uh, like I said before, there's the wave number, and e, e, the E is the uh, Fourier transform of the electric field. And you've got a similar relation for H of T. Um, and the, we, what we generally do, the math literature, is you go and you use separation of variables uh, to try to, uh, you create separation constants for each term in this equation. Uh, and the thing is, like, the, the, the first thing you uh, would think of is, like, I want to create a separation constant, so I want one of these derivatives to be a constant term. But unfortunately, you can't do it in this case because your light propagating down the length of the fiber uh, the, uh, the optical intensity along the z-direction gets mixed up with the radial in the azimuth direction, so uh, that term can't be set to a constant. Uh, we have to take a little bit different approach. So what you, what you usually do in a situation like this where all three degrees of freedom are involved is you can just do a straightforward, or suggest a straightforward solution of the electric field in the z-direction and write the uh, radial and the azimuthal components uh, in terms of that solution. So this is the E field in the Z direction of the Fourier transform. It's in the frequency domain. And this, the A is a normalization constant. Uh, F of P is a radial function uh, related to bezels. And uh, since we do have Z dependence, we're going to be using uh, not a power function, but an actual full bezels function here. And the exponential here represents the azimuthal part, where M is a uh, an integer because this is a, a physical problem and this other exponential is that's the propagation constant that's present uh, along the z direction um, so uh, when we when we work the first thing we got to do with this is we're going to figure out the radial part and this uh, radial solution uh, is a solution of the uh, bezels equation here like we said before and what we've done is we've written the terms inside the uh, brackets here, specifically in terms of the square of the index, uh, wave number square minus beta square. And we can actually write a special relation for them called kappa, which we denote, uh, put this insignia here, and uh, that kind of puts that in a one-term fashion. And like I said, we, this, this is going to be the general form for the f of rho. We write some constant. Um, and then a Bessel's function, and then we were going to determine the constant by placing boundary conditions on the on the general solution for the Bessel's function. Okay, and one thing we should mention too here is that we're interested in uh, two different regions. Okay, so what is the behavior of this uh, the, the dispersion on the interior? where the radial function is less than or equal to, to A, the core radius. A is, by the way, the core radius. And uh, in a single-mode fiber, the core radius is going to be uh, 4 to 5 microns in diameter. Uh, Multi-mode fibers are going to be 25 to 30. So 5 600% increase in size if it, if it carries multiple modes. Um, but we'll go into that later. But in this region called the cladding or overcladding, rho is going to exceed A. So... What we're tasked with here uh, in the derivation of this eigenvalue equation is where we're going to set the condition that rho, we want our condition that rho is going to be equal to A, 
or at row equals a, we want to figure out, uh, we can set up the tangential components of the electric field uh, to be equivalent. So we, we set E of z, uh, E of phi, and then the, the associated magnetic components, uh, B of z and B of phi, okay? And all of these become, uh, all the components are equal. I'm going to just put an equal sign in here. All of these components, be, the hypothesis is all these become equal at that core cladding interface where, it's, where rho is exactly equal to the core radius. And uh, then we can set up an eigenvalue equation. We have a matrix equation we can set up where we say rho is A, and we're going to do that next. Okay, so basically we had a Bessel's function of the first kind for the solution inside the core, okay, the core of the fiber. And we have a, a modified Bessel's function that we use for the solution inside the cladding, okay. And those particular relations, uh, kappa is the square root of the square root of the first refractive index, of the core refractive index, square of that wave number minus the propagation square of the propagation constant. And we have a similar relation down here called gamma, but it just turns the terms around. So what we're talking about is a solution uh, where rho is less than or equal to A in, in the core side, and then rho is greater than or equal to A in the cladding side, okay? And in the middle there, when we, like that, that condition I wrote before, where rho equals A, we can set up the eigenvalue problem. All right, and of course, looking at these graphs again, the core function there, the core radiance is the uh, bezel function, the radial parts at bezel's function, and uh, the cladding is the modified function, which with distance it decays exponentially at a very short distance, so the signals, what that tells you is that the refractive index inside the cladding uh, is much less than the core. The core is really pumped up. And we can see that intuitively if we draw it out. Um, middle section being the core, the light's bouncing in by internal, uh, total internal reflection. But the stuff that leaks into the cladding uh, is barely being bent. This optical signal is almost in a straight line or almost on a ray uh, going away from it. But if we set up that rho equals a condition, uh, we can get the eigenvalue equation, which is pretty beastly looking. It's pretty involved. But those primes represent differentiation, and all we have there is the Bessel's function written in terms of kappa uh, and A, uh, A again being the core radius. And uh, the solutions of that equation give us uh, uh, eigenvalues for the propagation constant for uh, beta when we, when we solve beta, which are the, pro which are the modes of propagation that the uh, fiber can support. So for example, uh, if we're talking about a fiber that only supports a single mode, we put in all of these uh, parameters and then solve the problem, uh, we're only going to get a, a beta that supports a single mode. Uh, if we get degeneracy in the function, uh, we get our multiple values, then beta can correspond to multiple values and the fiber supports more than the fundamental mode or just that little Gaussian spot, it will also support where the functions azimuth and the radial parts get segmented and cut up. Uh, drawing those illumination patterns out actually might be a little helpful. Um, yeah, your, your uh, TEM, the zero, 0 mode, which just corresponds to a spot the Gaussian spot, and if you get higher higher modes of emission, the, the uh, function cuts up into different sections. So it can be cut into two. Uh, if the azimuth component is increased by a factor of one, it can be cut radially also, so you can end up having multiple rings of illumination. And then combinations of those things are where you increase the, the mode order in the the uh, azimuth, and you just keep cutting it into into sections. That uh, represents a an optical signal with uh, multiple modes. But anyway, so that concludes this, and uh, hope this is helpful.